so in the, in the uh, in the bigger scheme of things, what you said a little while ago, you have confidence. Do you do you see this? Where, where do you see this leading in the the best case scenario? Of course, you know it can go it can go uh, any which way. As uh, as I've quoted here before, uh, Roger Walsh's uh, statement: "We're in a race between fear and consciousness." Mm. And, uh, uh, in the but in the best case scenario, where consciousness keeps. Uh, uh, keeps winning out or eventually might uh, might win out um what do you envision as the oh boy you know it's hard to predict these things you know but um you know well again i'm going to refer back to my work with folks who are dying because it's where i learned the most that they were my best teachers you know i work with a lot of folks who lived on the streets you know i changed diapers on park benches behind city hall and I worked with people who had no inner life and no um, spiritual practice per se, you know, at least not a professed one. And, um, and they made remarkable um, openings. You know, they, they, they were facing something that seemed unbearable to them or unimaginably difficult. And yet oftentimes they met it in remarkable ways. They found within themselves the resources, the compassion to meet the impossible in extraordinary ways. Now, sometimes that happened in the final weeks or days, even minutes of their life. And we might say, too late. Uh, and I would tend to agree, it's too late to, to start then. But what's true is if it's possible then, well, then it, if that possibility for, trans for transformation exists then, well, then it exists now. You know? And we can, we can move toward it. We can call on it now. I, I think, uh, you know, and this is, Bring us into another subject, but I think one of the pieces that's most important here is our relationship to hope, and um, and true hope, or what I call mature hope, is really what's I think called for now. Yeah, you know, um, action, of course, but grounded in something like true hope or mature hope, and I, I think that's different than 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 what we normally think of hope. How is a uh, quote that I. I love from uh, Seneca, the Roman philosopher. He says, uh, we cease to be afraid when we cease to hope because hope is always accompanied by fear. <laughs> uh, and on, on one level, that other kind of hope, oh, I hope the worst doesn't happen, uh, is kind of um, almost, uh, there's, there's fear intrinsic in that, uh, in that hope. And how, uh, how is mature hope different from that um, yeah well I, I think it's you know and, and and here's the problem with such words is that we've bantered them around and you know neutered them oftentimes in the course of our discussions but you know I think it's a subtle um, we could say attitude of heart and mind hope you know um, I think it's an essential resource for our, this human life and um, it's the ingredient we could say that provides the motivation for us to get up in the morning, get out of bed, you know, and go about our days. You know, it's what Desmond Tutu talked about when he said, you know, even in, it's the light that shows itself even in the darkest of times, right? But, um, you know, hope can take us beyond the rational. And that can be extraordinary because it enables us to survive sometimes, but it also can be, as you suggest, a kind of cause for delusion. You know, and we have to be mindful of that, I think, um, to discern the real value of hope of what I call mature hope. I think um, we have to draw a line between um, hope and expectation. Yeah. You know, we have to. Um, oh, hope is a kind of optimizing force that leads us toward harmony, I would say. Yeah, but it doesn't arrive from the outside. It doesn't impose itself on us. It arises from within us. So it's a has an active daring to it, uh, I'd say, and um, the usual kind of hope that we have is is wishful thinking, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's 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 hope guys or expectation rather guys this hope, um, you know, it's fixated on a specific outcome and it's uh, it gets conflated with results, uh, and it gets so object focused, right? So outcome focused. So attaching our hope or attaching our happiness to that is just a cause of suffering. It's not really helpful. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, remembering uh, Joanna Macy, who's yeah, who's just such an inspiring figure. Uh, she wrote a book uh, not too long ago called Active Hope, and she mm. said for years she hated the word hope. Mm-hmm. She, she didn't want to go near yeah. it because it just yeah. seemed too uh, airy fairy, and uh, it's going to work out just fine. Uh, but uh, when she redefined it for herself as uh, having a vision and just doing what you can to right. help bring forth that vision uh, without the expectation, without looking and seeing, are we there yet? Um, <laughs> to, to just uh, feel the fulfillment of, of moving towards that vision and in the process inspiring others. Um, well, she came out writing a book. Okay, I'll write a book on on, <laughs> on active hope. As much as I hated that word for, yeah. for because yeah, it's, and it's a great book, and it's well worth reading. I'd say to you, to people listening to this, mm-hmm. you know, I, for me, you know, I, I tend, tend to agree with with uh, Joanna. You know, I, I had a similar relationship to hope. I think, you know, for me, hope or mature hope, when I call it mature hope, maybe it's similar to what she calls active hope. Mm-hmm. It requires this clear intention, mm-hmm. but also simultaneously letting go. <laughs> and and it, it involves embracing uncertainty, not trying to manage uncertainty, you know, yeah. and uh, it's really the hope in the potential of our awakened response in, in, in something intrinsic in us uh, that can come forward and, and respond. Mm-hmm.